we know through all of the studies we've ever done that if you lower LDL cholesterol levels, you avoid or reduce clinical events. But look what happens in the patients who were treated with metformin. There was a smaller subset of patients who were treated initially with metformin, and from the beginning, those patients have a significant reduction in myocardial infarction that continues out over time. And this is really the first sort of inkling that perhaps drugs that don't cause hypoglycemia that have a different than do the secretagogues and insulin may be more beneficial in terms of macrovascular risk reduction. Why haven't trials shown more cardiovascular disease risk reduction? One of the biggest issues is that we are seeing lower and lower event rates. We haven't had very big differences in glycemic control, and at least not the big differences we'd like, because using drugs that cause hypoglycemia limit our ability to get people down to lower A1C levels. The observation periods tend to be short, but the final thing that I think is incredibly important is you've got to start early in the natural history of this disease. With diabetes, perhaps more than any other disease, it really matters what the patient does in their lives that are separate from us. I want them to tell me what they're concerned about, and sometimes it's completely unrelated to what I'm thinking about. And I also want to make sure that I've answered their questions and had them set goals. Now this is the one slide that changed how we all thought in the world of diabetes, and it's the slide you all must remember. So at the very top, are the two long-term trials. UKPDS, remember, type 2, newer onset. They follow people first for 10 years in the study and then 10 years and more in follow-up. And then DCCT and then EDICT, which was type 1s, followed intensively for about 7 years and then for many years in follow-up. Then these other studies, Accord Advance and VADT, all type 2 studies, all patients who already had macrovascular disease or were at high risk and already had longer duration disease. From what I've already said to you, these are the subtypes of patients that you might think you're not going to make much of a difference when it comes to macrovascular impact by treating glycemia. So in all of these studies, lower blood sugars reduce microvascular risk, but the cardiovascular risk data is much more complicated. So in the short term, none of the studies showed a reduction in cardiovascular disease from glucose lowering, but over the long haul, you see a nice reduction, independent of anything else, in both UKPDS and DCCT. So start early, treat aggressively, and patients will do well over time is that no matter what your hemoglobin A1C level, whether you're in intensive treatment in any of these studies or standard treatment, having an episode of severe hypoglycemia increases your mortality. It increases your risk of death by three to five percent. So our glucose targets are an A1C of less than seven, but we individualize targets. At 65 and over, we now say the target is less than 7.5, at least according to the American <laughs> Diabetes Association. Moderate comorbidities, they say your target's less than 8, and severe comorbidities, they say your target's less than 8.5. There is only one thing I know for sure, perhaps two. One is that lifestyle matters. Second of all, Metformin is the best characterized drug. We know all that's good, bad, and indifferent about it. It's been out since 1957, and it's the first line therapy. It's the first drug to go with. It works. What do you do next? Well, I can't tell you. I can't tell you for two reasons. One is there's no really good comparative data that says which one should I take, because each of these drugs has been studied, but not in trials that compares them against each other, really. So at the county, I can tell you that I go from metformin to a sulfonylurea agent to insulin because those are the steps in the setting in which I practice. If that second line therapy doesn't work, we have all sorts of third line combinations where there's even less data on how all well these things work together. And then if that doesn't work, you can go to basal insulin. And a lot of what we talk about in the new guideline is the fact that we want you to use basal insulin plus a GLP-1 receptor agonist as opposed to mealtime insulin because mealtime insulin has the highest rate of hypoglycemia 
and actually the lowest rate of getting to target. Now, there's some caveat. If you're not able to tolerate metformin, you can use any of these as a first-line agent instead of metformin. You can therapy if your A1C is higher. And if somebody's really sick, you may need to start insulin sooner rather than later. Okay. How do I treat to avoid hypoglycemia? This is my preferred path. So I start with metformin, and then I add in a TZD, a DPP4 inhibitor, an SGLT2 inhibitor, or a GLP1 receptor agonist. That's how you avoid hypoglycemia. The least weight gain, you take away TZDs from that, and you get this pathway. And then the lowest cost, you go this way. So is there a dose of weight loss that does reduce cardiovascular disease risk? And you know what? The answer is yes. If you lose 10% or more of your body weight and keep it off, you will reduce your risk of macrovascular disease. What was associated with weight loss? What in particular was associated with weight loss in our East LA population was the use of meal replacement. So in East LA, it's very hard to go and tell patients to have healthy food when they can't afford it, right? It's expensive. It's expensive to get fresh fruits and vegetables. So in this study, we gave people meal replacements. It was either slim fast, Glucerna or HMR, and they could have meal replacements for one to two meals a day. And in our site in particular, but in every site, the more meal replacements you use, the greater your weight loss. So in terms of treating cardiovascular risk, we obviously do the things we need to do using statins, controlling blood pressure and aspirin. I personally think that if we use drugs that don't cause hypoglycemia, or at least try to minimize hypoglycemia, that we're going to do better. I think early control is vitally important that should be maintained over time. And I also think we should never ever forget the value of lifestyle. I was told like the percentage of my body of sugar was like 12%. Your A1C was 12%. Yeah, so uh, that was, that felt like that's not going to work out. I drank a lot of Cokes, I can tell you that. I, I mean, there was a lot of sugar in my, um, di in my diet, I guess, yeah. My mother at night would always have, she had candy out. We we're growing up to watch television. So that was sort of uh, love, right? <laughs> <laughs> so he had neuropathy, which scared you. And we sent him to a dietitian, and he lost weight. How much did you lose? Like 20 pounds, I right? think so, yeah. I did lose weight. I, 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 you know, I, I think I was scared into, you know. You were scared into it, yes. Yeah. Um, when did you start feeling in control of it? No, I don't. <laughs> I mean, I don't. I still don't. Anne got me through medication and stuff down to like below six from the 12. I walk like four miles, five miles a day. Yeah, yeah, pretty good. Yeah, I do pretty good. So not, not fast enough and probably not with enough cardio where I'm, you know, doing enough exerted uh, exercise. Everybody never does good enough. He does good enough. The point of it, him, is that we started with metformin. After metformin wasn't working as well. Oh, and then I put him a, little, a low dose of actose to help preserve his beta cells at some point when his blood sugars went up a bit. And then he takes 15 milligrams of actose a day. And on metformin and actose, he did well for maybe eight years. And then his blood sugar started to go up some. And then we put him on a DPP-4 inhibitor. And then you took that for a while, and then you out ate that, and then his A1C did go up to 7.8, which is above any target. And then he's now on a low dose of an SGLT2 inhibitor with metformin and a little bit of actose, correct? I don't know what the... Uh... Yes. <laughs> Do you take the pills I give you? Yeah. <laughs>